Welcome to this bonus lesson in the Better Online Events mini course by Thrive Themes. So in the lessons so far, we've covered some of the basics of what you need to know in order to do a good online event. And we've covered specific use cases for online classes, online meetings, physical classes, and sales webinars. Now, if you find yourself in a position where you want to do some kind of an online event that doesn't match any of these use cases, if you have special requirements and you're thinking, okay, I want to get more people involved, I want to make more things happen, then there is an option you should consider. And the reason I'm making this lesson right here is because in the comments, I have seen people ask me about use cases that seem pretty exotic, where I have to say, as far as I know, there is no meeting or online calling tool out there that supports this kind of use case. But like I said, there is still an option to consider. If you want to do something in an online event that isn't supported as a feature in any of the online meeting tools you can find, then live streaming and switching is where to look next. So the idea is this, you can use a tool like OBS, which by the way is a free tool, to mix your own combination of media streams and switch between scenes. So you can switch between different presenters, switch between different scenes, have multiple layers of media showing on screen and so on. And it basically gives you manual control over all that. This is the kind of tool that is used in newsrooms, for example. If you watch a news show and they have interviews where they have all kinds of text overlays going on, they have frames around different interviewees, they switch back and forth between different presenters, they have animations in the background and overlays and so on. That is what a switching tool allows you to do. And yes, you can make everything I just described, you can make all that happen in OBS, but of course it comes at a cost, not a monetary cost, like I said, it's a free tool, but it comes at the cost of a steep learning curve. It is complicated to use compared to, you know, firing up something like Crowdcast, where it's really easy to start and join an event. Getting an OBS live stream going, it will take at least a few hours of learning and practicing before you can actually make that happen. But having said that, here's a very brief crash course on what OBS is and how to use it. So this here on my laptop is OBS, Open Broadcaster Software. And in this video, I want to give you a quick overview of what you can do with this tool. This is not, however, going to be a complete tutorial on how to use this software, because as you'll see, this is pretty complex and it can do all kinds of things. And I can't really hope to cover all of them in a single lesson. There are many excellent OBS tutorials out there. So for whatever your specific use case is, I encourage you to do a search on YouTube and you'll find lots of great guidance. The goal here is I want to show you the basics so you can get an idea of what the capabilities of OBS are and you can figure out whether this tool matches your use case or not. With that said, we'll look at four things. I'll show you the basics of setting up scenes in OBS, of switching between different scenes. I'll show you the easiest way to bring in additional presenters or interviewees or whatever, additional people into your scenes using free tools only. And I'll show you the basics of streaming and recording using OBS. So let's get started right away. So this here is a new scene or a new scene collection in OBS. As you can see, there's nothing here yet. And you can start that by just going to scene collections, clicking on new and giving it a name. I call this new demo. We have one scene and no sources. And the way OBS works is I can create as many different scenes as I want. And in each scene, I can bring in whatever sources I want. Here's how that works. I click on the plus in sources and I can choose what I want to bring in. So for example, I can do audio input capture. I'll just call this mic and click OK and then choose a device. And I'll choose my microphone here, the built-in microphone. Not that I would usually use that, but now I'm basically telling OBS bring the sound that my microphone picks up, bring that into this scene. And we have levels here that show us it's working. And then let's have something visual. So video capture device, I'll call this cam and OK. And I have my cam link set up here with my external camera. And as you can see, it's automatically recognized. I can also change all kinds of settings here. But in this case, I just choose which camera and that seems to work. So I click OK. And that gives me this camera feed. Now, as you can see, we have some background stuff going on. That's also no problem because I can move this around and I can resize this and I can crop this. So let's say I want to, I can press Alt and drag to get a crop here. 
and I can resize this and place this anywhere I want. And this is where we start seeing what a scene is really about, because you can think of this almost like creating a PowerPoint slide, but instead of creating a static slide consisting of images and text and so on, you're creating a live feed slide, creating of video feeds, images, text, and so on and so forth. So let's say I wanna bring in another layer. Let's have a image and I'll call this background and then I'll click on browse and let's go and choose some nice looking image here. Okay. So this is just an image that I've saved on my computer that I can bring in. And again, I can move this around and resize this and so on. And here's another important point. As you can see, this image is now covering everything, which is not what we want. And in order to fix that, I can change the layering. So as you can see, the background is the top layer here, which we don't want. So I'll move this to the bottom layer, which means that now the video is on top. And in this way, and I can bring in, as you can see here, there's all kinds of stuff we can bring in. So you can bring in pre-recorded videos, you can bring in images, you can add text layers, and you can even, there's even advanced features like you can have a live updating Twitter feed showing inside your scene. That's the basic idea. Using these sources, I can layer whatever sources I want, whatever media I want to create a scene. And then importantly, I can have more than one scene. So let's go and go to the scenes here and click on plus and I'll call this one screen. So maybe I want to share my screen in this one. Now, I probably want the same audio capture and I can say add existing. So the same microphone I set up before, I can bring that in. I can do the same with video capture. I can say I want the same camera here. I want to bring in the same source. But in addition, I want to bring in a screen capture. So we go to display capture and call it screen one. And then I choose which screen to share, which is the other one. There we go. And as I mentioned in previous lessons, what I have here is I have a two screen setup and I'm going to use my laptop screen to manage all this. And I'm going to use the second screen to present. So this entire screen is just there to be shared. And, and now I can, again, I basically have these different feeds. I want to put my screen behind my cam. I want to resize my cam. And I'm just going to keep this simple. Let's shove this in the corner here, maybe crop out a bit. And then this here, I want to resize. Let's make this cover the whole screen like this. So now I have a very simple configuration where I can share my, my live video. I can present to the video here. I'm gonna be visible in the corner. And at the same time here, I can do whatever I want, whatever I wanna show on screen will happen here. So if I wanna to switch to a whiteboard and do some scribbling here, that will immediately show up I can switch back to a website, you get the idea. So this is how I can create scenes and I can switch between them. So for example, if I have this scene here where I'm showing something on screen and I have the other scene where it's mainly just live video, in this case with a random background image, I can switch between those. And so as I'm either recording or streaming live, I can say, okay, once I wanna explain something on screen, I switch here. Once I want to go back to just live video, I switch here. That's the idea of making scenes and switching between scenes. Now, a really powerful feature in OBS is that you can bring in multiple presenters. So if you want to do an interview or something like that with multiple people, there is one easy way. There's basically a complicated way to do it, but there's one easy way to do it using free tools only, and that is using Skype. So if I go into Skype, what we want to do is go into the settings and here calling and advanced. So settings, calling, advanced, and you wanna check the allow NDI usage. You wanna activate this feature. And NDI is basically a way for you to take the, the feed from Skype and send it over to OBS. So once I've got this activated, ready to go, and let's do a test call here. So now we've got a test call here with Ollie and then I'm gonna switch into OBS. I'm going to go into my scene one and I'm going to bring in, I'm gonna eliminate this Skype window here. I'm gonna bring in an NDI source, right? That's the thing we just activated. I'm gonna call this Skype. 
and we're choosing the source and I can either show the local the active speaker or the guest and I'm going to choose the guest here I'm going to add this and here we are now we have the guest on video and it's the same thing right so I can resize this and reshuffle this and crop this and so on to make this look good so I can have some kind of a scene like this with two speakers we can have our interview scene here and I can have you know I can switch back to my screen I could create a scene where we only see the guest and this is basically what you get when you watch a news show where they have interviews and they switch between the speakers and the view with multiple speakers that's basically what we're doing here right we can create all these scenes where I can have a, a scene with just me a scene with me and the guest a scene with just the guest scene with the screen and I can switch between them on the fly. So finally, once we've gotten our head around all this, what we can do with OBS is we can either simply record our screen or we can live stream. And the way this works, basically what we're seeing in this window here, this is a representation of whatever will be either recorded or streamed. And you have the controls for this here. So if you click on start recording, so first of all, you can go into settings and you can set your various outputs so you can choose the bit rate, basically the quality and the folder where stuff will be saved to. And you have your streaming options here where, again, I'm not going to go into detail on how to do this. You can find tutorials if you're thinking, I want to live stream to YouTube, how do I do it? I want to live stream to Facebook, how do I do it? You will find tutorials that show you how to set this up and what keys to enter here in order to set up a live stream. And once that's done, you can either hit start recording and it will simply record your scene and you can go through and you can switch while you're recording and it will give you a video file. And you can either just publish that video file or you can use that video file for further editing. And if you choose start streaming, then it will start live streaming to whatever service that you've chosen. So this is how you can use this to live stream to YouTube or Vimeo or Facebook. All right, with this, I think we've covered pretty much everything you need to know in order to do your classes, meetings, online events, or whatever you can dream up online. I hope you've enjoyed this series. If you've liked it, please leave a like. It helps more people find these videos. And if you have any questions or feedback, please leave a comment below.